There's a few news articles that I thought were interesting. Um, this is a really common topic these days. What can you do about ransomware? And I thought this was a pretty good article, but uh, you know, to skip to the end, the answer is nothing easy, which is the thing. Um, they talk about the problems, uh, like people don't use two-factor everywhere. So uh, users will click on links and attachments and run them even when you tell them not to. Your antivirus stuff is not that powerful, so it's pretty easy to make malware sneak past antivirus. Um, your more sophisticated solutions that run the malware in a sandbox tend to be too late to, to save you. And you can use living off the land binaries, which is an increasingly popular technique where you do not use malware. You use legitimate system tools to do evil things. And of course, no, no anti-malware solution will detect that. And there are a bunch of tool sets to make this easy. The easiest being the ransomware as a service affiliate models where you just use software somebody else wrote and you uh, make a deal to pay them back some of the money and uh, so get a sophisticated kit without really knowing very much, just like everybody else can just buy a powerful program online and use it without really knowing much about how it works. And the uh, groups collaborate better than the defenders because the defenders have privacy and legal concerns. They can't really share their logs or anything with other people, not in America, although they can in Europe. And uh, so the response is not coordinated. And, it's, and of course, cryptocurrency means that they can collect ransom payments with very little chance of being really tracked down and punished. So, so what to do about it? Unfortunately, there's nothing simple. There's nothing like buy this product and install it, you'll be fine. You just have to uh, up your security posture, like we're talking about in the whole incident response class. It's not simple at all. Uh, you should segment your network. You should have network monitoring. You should have uh, offline backups. You should have responses to people as they get in and so on. It's, it's, not, it's an unpleasant answer. There's not like just install something and you're done. It's like you just have to become more security aware and spend a lot of money on training and staff and products and constantly update it and then you'll become more resistant to attacks. But uh, it's pretty harsh. So the governor of Missouri who wants to prosecute the journalist who looked in the source code of a web page and found uh, encoded social security numbers he is determined to prosecute this person, or at least to make a big deal out of it, in order to punish the newspaper, which he hates. Because um, this is a fairly common Republican thing now. Remember, the press is the enemy of the state, and you just want to punish newspapers and so on. So he's pushing to uh, putting out TV commercials and stuff, saying this guy is terrible. And this is a funny one, saying it cost the state $50 million. That this guy pointed out that they were leaking Social Security numbers, and they had to fix that. Uh, this is an old thing people used to say. If you have an insecure page and you complain and they have to make it secure, they want to charge you however much it costs to make it secure, as if they didn't have any need to make it secure until you started complaining. So anyway, it's um, he's, I don't think that he's really going to lead to this person going to jail, but it is a posture, which we're seeing an awful lot of. Um, for example, Governor Abbott in Texas is just pushing more and more outrageous things. And I think the point is, um, as they say, Governor Abbott, like five years ago, was a sort of reasonable, moderate governor. But the problem is now, if you're a Republican, you only have to worry about the primary because general election will go to you because your state is Republican. And in the primary, uh, since the electorate has been pushed so far to the right, everyone's worried about being primaried on the right. So they have to move way over into crazy town on the right and posture so nobody can get to the right of them and take them out. This is... Uh, our very unhealthy system where the extremes are what wins. So everybody has to choose an exciting, outrageous position. Nobody can run on like middle of the road, sensible platforms. You won't win. Anyway, um, so this is kind of unbelievable. World coin is going to make tens of thousands of silver orbs. You will then put these orbs in some public place and people will scan their eye with this orb, and then they will get free crypto, some kind of orb coin, and you'll have some kind of giant database of everybody's retinas created by this. It sounds completely insane, and everybody says, are you out of your mind? You're creating a biometric database of people for no apparent reason, and how are you going to secure it, and who's going to use it, and what is this nonsense? So I don't think this is happening yet, but it's a proposal, and this guy wants to make it make world coin um, 
it seems like something straight out of a dystopian novel like 1984. So uh, many people hope that never really happens. So Trump announced his new network called Truth, which is his imitation of Twitter. So he can have a social network. This is the second or third time this has been tried. There was Gab and there was Parler. And um, the uh, this one is incredibly messed up, as you'd expect. Um, it is stolen open source software, rebranded sloppily without even removing all the marking logos and used in violation of its license, uh, copying something called um, Mastodon, the open source social network. And it was is not supposed to be available yet, but they announced it and people found where it was and immediately hacked into it. They made fake Donald Trump accounts, they made other accounts, um, and then they took it down. For, for, for several hours, people were in fact hacking into it and posting screenshots of insulting messages from all these accounts and stuff. And uh, uh, I saw another person who dug down to it and claimed it's all hosted in China and so on. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's, it's just sort of like all the other Trump products. <laughs> Um, I was thinking if you write Trump like the way you write things on Gartner by completeness of vision and ability to execute, he scores really badly on both scores. Many Anything he creates is just sloppily thrown together and falls apart and put up by just a bunch of swindlers. He remains incredibly popular among his base for his speeches, which he calibrates to contain lines that will get applause from them. But uh, his ability to actually build any kind of technical social network or even to buy a good one, I highly doubt. So this is almost certainly going to just crash and burn like his previous attempts to make a new social network. But anyway, um, it is kind of amusing. When it came out, some people said, I predict this is going to get hacked before it even opens. And within an hour, it was hacked before it even opened. So this is pretty awesome. The U.S. government, uh, remember Biden about two months ago when, when the uh, oil pipeline got hacked with ransomware, he met with Putin and he said, if you don't take these guys out, I'll have to do it. And it seemed like nothing happened, but Biden said, we're doing something, you just don't know it yet. And apparently that's really true. They changed the legal status of ransomware groups to make them like terrorists. So that took the gloves off. So our military hackers are allowed to attack them. And that's what they did. They were ready to go. They just weren't allowed to do it to ransomware groups before. So now they hacked them, which I think is how they took the money back from the Colonial Pipeline. They hacked them. They infected their machines. They infected their backups. So when they restored from backups, they were just giving them control again, and they uh, destroyed the group. So we're now hacking them back with the military, which I'm real glad to see because, as I've said, consumers cannot really reasonably protect themselves from ransomware, and neither can companies. So it's nice if the U.S. military will protect us from these foreign aggressors um, because leaving it up to the individual companies doesn't seem practical. So treating that as a military activity with a military response seems to be more effective. Yep, yep, it is. It's a never ending cat and mouse game, but you know, it's, it's not, it's, I think it's quite fair to, to regard it as a form of terrorism. You know, you infiltrate the groups, you try to take them down, these guys will come into our country and take down critical national infrastructure. So uh, this seems good to me. We have really powerful military hacking teams, and they just like to be let off the leash and allowed to hack people, and we're letting them do it now. So that seems productive. And here's Mastodon. The man that did it said this is, the Mastodon is a social network he wrote, which is open source, and if you use it, you must make your code open source. And uh, what the Trump thing does is use it and then call it proprietary and make it closed source, which is a violation of the license. So I'm not sure if you can be prosecuted for violating an open source license. I guess you could get sued by the Linux Foundation or something. I'm not sure I know if there's a real penalty for that. So this is like a lot of things Trump and his cronies do like Bannon. You know, he just ignores the subpoena because, in fact, there's no practical way to really punish you. So anyway, um, all right. And this is kind of amazing. Q is now going to join the government. The guy who has been unmasked as most likely being Q himself is Ron Watkins, who ran 8kun, one of the 4chan clones, because people kept having their sites taken down for being Q, and now he is running for Congress. So uh, the absolute most lunatic far-right fringe with the Pizzagate conspiracies beyond the birthers are going to, are increasingly incorporated in the real government. And this is why, you know, I'm, uh, I'm very troubled. We, we seem to be going insane over here. Uh, we're taking people who have absolutely no business being in the government and elevating them to government positions. 
instead of having reasonable people who will make reasonable decisions, this is very unhealthy. And this is what the ancients said when they developed, when they said, uh, said what you really need is a hereditary monarchy. If you let the common people vote for a leader, they will choose some idiot who shouldn't be a leader. And unfortunately, that seems to be what's happening. <laughs> anyway, um, so Microsoft Visual Studio is going to be available in the browser. So you don't have to install it. So this is interesting. I'm using it quite a bit in the malware analysis class. It'll be interesting to see how much we can use it this way. Um, yeah, seeing what goes in the USA here in Switzerland, not much happens ever. Well, you know, I wish we could get back to where boring government and not much happens. Um, I know the USA is like a, a machine that the bearings have broken and it's rattling and going off and collapsing and destroying itself. It's, uh, it's a very unhealthy time over here. Yeah, the plan to put KKK members in the government. Yeah, and we've had them there before. Um, and Trump was not far from it. You know, I think it's, we have reasonable people over here, but they don't seem to be able to make it through our election system. That's why I, I like Andrew Yang's ideas. I mean, I don't suppose he can actually get anywhere with it, but he says we need to switch to ranked choice voting and open primaries so everybody can vote in the primaries and the primary candidates can win by running in the middle. What we need is people to run in the middle and to get chosen from there and fringe people should be only able to get a small amount of the vote. So we should also have everybody voting on their phones and we should have a national holiday on voting day so everybody can easily vote. We need a higher voter turnout and we need more people counted so that the majority is in the middle. Right now, since only the extreme people bother to vote because we make it difficult, you have only the lunatics voting and so your leaders are not chosen by an average of all the people. And so we have the current situation where something like 65% of everybody thinks our government is terrible and that is exactly what's not supposed to happen in a democracy. You're not, your leaders should be supported by most of the people. But that is absolutely not true anymore. There's a defect in our system. Anyway, um, so this is pretty amazing. Zerodium, which I, is Zerodium an American company? That's why I'm not sure. In Washington, D.C., um, this is one of those, I'm not, I am not surprised this is legal in America. They buy zero days and then they resell them to people, which is basically being an arms broker. And now they've been brokering for a long time. Hopefully they sell them mostly to the NSA or to NATO countries. I think otherwise it would be illegal. But anyway, they've now pre announced they want VPN zero days. So you can break into zero days. There was another article that came out last week explaining how a lot of these uh, VPNs are actually run by a malware company like ExpressVPN that I hear advertised everywhere. I heard ads today on a podcast saying, do you want your ISP knowing what you're doing? They can sell your data. Instead, install ExpressVPN. And I say, yeah, then you give your data directly to the crooks. <laughs> You'd probably be better off giving it to your ISP. But anyway, um, now they're going to have zero days in it, so nation states can hack into the VPNs also, which um, might be all right, I guess, depending on who's doing it. Anyway, um, that's all for the news.